Samba. Yes. Hello my beautiful minds, welcome to the Light Bites show once again where you'll be motivated and inspired for your better self. My name is Eve and for those who are just joining us newly, um, I'm, the, I'm the host for Light Bites. Today we're going to be having an interesting topic. Um, it's going to be on African, African nature. We should take pride in our African nature. Thank you guys for coming on set to me, with me today. So basically we're going to be deliberating on taking pride in African culture our nature, our essence of being. Some people come over to the Western world and they just change. They put aside their African nature and they just want to embrace the Western culture. So, what do you have to say about that? The same. That says when you're in Rome, you behave like a Roman and when you're in England, you behave English. So I guess that's why people try to fit in. So, you know, so they don't, no jokes aside. Um, I mean, as Africans, we have our culture is like the most important thing to us like it's not a lot of countries that have a culture as a nation like but we as africans we have our culture and this culture is like it builds us and has an impact in our lives and decisions we make and how we do things and or even when we come into other countries we try sometimes to hold on to these things but you know sometimes times that peak yeah. you just have to kind of depart from it just yeah. to try to fit in yeah. and, you know let's go back to you our tradition in terms of health um, because I've come to realize that even now some medication you take you're trying to cure yourself of a particular sickness and they tell you to take a, okay let's say period pains uh, my GP is like no um, if you take ibuprofen it's gonna give you some I think it's a kidney failure or some cancer or stuff like that so I'm trying to cure myself and I'm taking a medication that's not just curing me, that's gonna give me something else. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So I'm like, but if you if you I don't know if you notice our olden days, our forefathers, they live longer. Like they don't there was no medication. They didn't live on medication. So why don't we just go back to our traditional pebble uh, medications? I think about well, tradition is not really cool nowadays, is it? There's people outside, you know, boiling a pot for five hours trying to make micro chip at boom. <laughs> like you know, like what was like given if you had like stomach pains and stuff, oh, and it yeah. takes time to make it. You put it in the thing, it looks like, like, like pee sometimes. You know, you look in the pot, it looks like pee. You think to yourself, "Wow, man, this is some," and it tastes disgusting. But when you take it, you actually do feel a lot better. Have something like that with the with the brush, you know, to brush the teeth with a stick. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. You see what I mean? You guys know about that. Yeah. You don't know about that. You yeah, mean, I know about that. Yeah, you know about that now. But back then, it was seen as more healthier because it was more healthy for you to use a stick than use a toothbrush. It's to help you with your, you know, with getting your, what they call the um, enamel. The gums. Yeah, mm -hmm. the enamel back on your teeth and all those other things. There's things that we don't know because it's not traditional to us anymore. You have tradition, like, you know, like Dr. Sebi and all those things. That you have, like, what they do, like, natural, natural foods now that give you the protein you need, the, the vitamins and all those things you need that we don't know anymore. Now we go to Holland and Barrett, so we go to some area to go get some more vitamins and we forget yeah. about the deep-rooted African. Yeah. And I, th I think the, uh, the question is now is why, how, how come we're forgetting this, um, our traditions? Like, because nobody's, why? Nobody's, nobody's teaching the younger people. Like you have a lot of African people now are all westernized. Okay. Even if you look at African videos, the westernized videos, the booty shake and everything, you know, trying to make the, the big chains and everything, you know, yeah. it's all to fit, fit to a Western audience. It's not just for, remember about when we used to, as I said, used to make all this traditional herbal stuff to help us you know, improve our health mm -hmm. and well-being, but it's not like that. Yeah, but even when it comes to like the African help stuff, let, let's talk about it, accessibility. Uh, is, it, is it possible to get it? So I'm, I'm sure there will be parents yeah. out there that still want to use yeah. this thing and rather, instead of going to take all this out oh, to the treatment, they still want to do, but yeah. can you get it? What, can right. you get it? It's possible you can. You, you can ah. get it from Africa. Yeah, they're but bringing you get it. Yeah, yeah, you get what I'm saying. So <laughs> well, it's sometimes that's yeah. a bit. Can, yeah. Yeah. Is that is that possible? Possibility, yeah. So everybody, it always comes down to okay, what's the easiest route? Yeah. GP. GP. But do you know that I think if you take more of fruits, because there, there's some fruits naturally that's medicinal. True that. Yeah, like okra. Okra is medicinal. Okra it helps a lot of people um, with diabetes apparently, it helps them with diabetes. You know, this is a new thing that's come up, but we have to be in the okra since 
Long time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so okra, you know what I mean? Look at other, other natural. We, we drink Gary a lot. You know what I mean? Gary's another. Yeah. I mean, you eat it cold, it's got a nutritional value. Once you boil it up, make it a bite, it's carbohydrate. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's something I remember again, because right now, the kind of food we eat is processed. Mm. Processed food, yeah. Yeah, but right then, our parents get the food straight from the farm. Yeah, like yeah. you go uproot tubers of yam, yeah. you go uproot um, cassava yeah. and all yeah. of that. Yeah. They get it straight from the like the natural point. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But then we come to the Western world, we are eating all processed. Someone once told me that the chickens yeah. that we eat, they're actually stored chemically. You think about it, you go to KFC, right? You buy I just can't. you buy anybody gonna buy chicken buckets. How many chickens do you think? <coughs> They've been killing for the past day yes. to feed one family 12 buckets, one family comes another 12 buckets. That's a lot, couple of aunties, uncles in chicken life yeah. you've, you've, you've taken away. <laughs> but how many aunties and uncles do you, do you have? You know, how much chicken do you actually have? You know, because so, when you think so, about it, so basically, we're losing our tradition because yeah. of comfort and convenience. Yeah. That's right. But then it's, it's that a right ground to actually let go of our value that we bear. Most African no, no. value is a personal thing. Letting go of your culture, yeah. it's I think it's more it's easier, but when it comes to values personally, no matter how long I yeah. think I've lived in this country, I would mm -hmm. never depart from what I was taught as a kid growing yeah. up in Africa. Not because I'm trying to fit in my friends mm -hmm. to be more British or British, <laughs> but I will never depart from it because at the end of the day, it always goes back to your family if you do things wrong to the people say oh your parents did not raise you well you don't want that you don't yeah. want to raise your child yeah. the best way you can yeah. only for he or she he or her to just backstab on you with any finger comes back to you yeah. it's always about you using your common sense you can sometimes can't help it you want to look nice okay we don't expect me to wear boban sukutu to the club do you why not why not that's the it's why not you that? That's your culture, bro. But that's the mentality, though, know, because when you say why not means, obviously, you're cool with it because that's who you yeah. are. Yeah. Here's the, wrong, but here's the issue, yeah? yeah. Our identity is who we are. Yeah. 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 And she transcend into our mentality. That's right. And our actions. Yeah. So Thank if you. your identity is really an African identity, then you should act African. African. And but think of this that's way. That's what it is. A lot of African <laughs> children, because I wasn't born here, so I was from Africa, I came here. Yeah. A lot of things that I would have done, obviously, back then when I was 12 to what I'm now, I'm 31, mm. it's different to what I would have. Because the, the, the my the culture here is very different. But if you're brought from Africa from a really, really young age and you've come here and then you were acclimatized to everything that's going around here, you will start to pick up certain trends and traditions. One thing I picked up when I was younger, I got in trouble for, was starting to talk back to my mother. We don't do that in Africa. You don't do that. You, you get a slap, man. You don't do that in African culture. <laughs> you, you can't, can't. call your mother by the first name or since somebody that's older than you saying, hey, John. You know what I mean? You'd be like, who's to Who's John? You know what I mean? Yeah. You'd be like, you call me sir, you call me ma. You know what I mean? Something like that. Auntie. Yeah, uncle and auntie. There's no word is calling people by first the name. The respect is there. The yeah. respect is part of African culture. I mean, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day about, um, this is interesting, about somebody who, when we, you know Nigerians, when we meet older, yeah. like the men will prostrate. Yeah. yeah. Especially yours. And somebody who was from the Caribbean, I will not say what country, but was saying to me, um, <laughs> That was saying to me that, you know what, like, I don't believe in that. Like, I will never prostrate to any man or any woman. I said, it's not about, no, it's said bowing down. We don't bow down, we prostrate. Mm -hmm. It's a form of respect yeah. and gratitude sometimes when you do that to an elderly mm -hmm. person in mm -hmm. our culture. So it's something where it's like, people are not, they're naive about certain things. So when you bring new things to this country, like you want to talk about Eba and all those other things, yeah. they're like, oh, what is that? And it's like, oh, it's, it's you know, something but, we But eat. yeah, that, that's the thing. You should be proud to teach them your culture because they are proud to teach us their culture and we're embracing theirs. That's so what we're embracing yeah. theirs. We're not giving them a chance. Yeah, we're, we're, not, not, giving giving we're yeah. not giving back. We're not giving back. Because in Africa, we see coming to the Western culture as a privilege. Like, oh my God, money goes no. to trees over there. You know, so when you get there, send me 5,000 pounds back once you get it. It's like, People don't understand it's not like that over here. So we have to obviously, sometimes you have to kind of, I don't want to say repress, but you have to kind of tone it down a little bit while you're here. Because our culture, when we speak, sometimes we speak loud and you know, people say we're aggressive. You know what I mean? But that's how we talk. Oh, so we just so should embrace that. You say we should not so we should embrace, embrace that. that. I'm when saying, we're, that, we're I'm not saying, that, I'm saying that it's been. So should we embrace that when we're in a no. public transport community and we're on the phone like that? It's like, you know, I, I, like I said, Africans personally, I think what's the first swallowed microphone I've built? We are just so loud. So you expect us to accept 
there and be loud on the public transport because yeah, that's not what we're saying. I'm saying I'm saying we have to tone it down because we know if you honestly if you're speaking to somebody on the phone or you speak to somebody face to face and you can tell people down the street can hear your conversation. Obviously, you can go okay, maybe I'm talking a bit too loud. I'll have to tone it down. But if you go to an event, <coughs> you work in this country, and they tell you about a dress code, and you come there. We'll buy the, That's what I have. It's probably to wear that to a club when you think they'll let me in. Beautiful, I mean, no, no, but, but it's still your tradition. So it's it's like you know you have the Muslim people who wear the hijabs and all those kind of things. There, yeah. it is part of your the culture. The culture. Even at we, work, even at work, I still see some of the ladies they wear this um all regalia and all of them, and they still allow them. So okay. why can't you say that? No, this is what my culture says. I, I think we're not proud enough. Of that. Yeah, we're, we're not, not proud, proud enough. enough. We don't embrace enough. We don't even know enough. A lot of young yeah. people nowadays. Where are you from? I'm oh, from Ghana. You speak Ghana? No. Do you do you eat Ghana? No, no, no. I know a bit about it. <coughs> or do you know anything about your culture? No, not really. I'm British. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 this. So we, some people, some families, they come here and they just feel like yeah, or they see Western culture as better. Yes. And I've and I've noticed that with a lot of African people, yeah. they say, ah, I'm in the UK. <laughs> you know, I'm in the UK. <laughs> that's what you see them. I'm that's in the UK. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they, they feel like, yeah, you know, I'm in the UK. I'm I'm above every African now. I'm above every African. You can't talk to me. You know, I'm I'm, I'm British. Hey man, like, what makes you British? And then I've got some friends whereby I'm like, oh, come to my house. I'll prepare you. Eba and Igusi soup, and she was like, "Oh no, I don't eat that anymore. What I want is risotto." I'm like, "Risotto is is it Spanish food or, or, or Latin food or something?" Exactly. I'm like, "Oh, are you serious? Do you eat Eba? Are you Nigerian? Like you're African?" And this is what she grew up with, so she's exactly. already she's already missing some stuff. Like, because we want what am I what am I looking with? I don't know. Because you're not eating the same food you eat that time. No, you eat so you're so eating, like, yeah, you eat risotto with oh. salad. Where is salad? Salad is salad is uh, 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 grass. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Diet. 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 One, one egg, one egg, and two no, 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 yeah, yeah, but every African that's the mentality. No matter what country. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like the mentality is the British culture is above the African culture. Mm. And that's why people accept it and they want to run to this culture. Mm. Yeah, pretty that's much. what we need to change. Like, how do we change? Actually, that? No, it's funny. I actually, I actually notice and I realize that if we actually open up more to these people, they actually, have you noticed last this summer how even British people wear the Ghanaian kings? That's what yeah, they yeah, yeah. That's what they I'm actually love it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is, and you notice they actually tied their hair. British people, way. Africans tie, yeah. we tie, we know how we tie our hair yeah. in the morning. We, yeah. Yeah. And I notice a lot of them. I've noticed that they're even eager to know about our culture. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes because, we are just. Because it is, it, is, it is a beautiful thing, you know what I mean? Knowing sharing cultures and sharing traditions with people. I think it's it's good to know, oh, why, how do you do your hair like that? Or, oh, your hair grows in such a funky way. Like, you mm -hmm. know, how can I do my hair like that? And you have a lot of people who are. Caucasian who are obviously embracing African culture, they learn how to cook our food, they take it in as a, oh wow, you know, people who do nutrition for instance, they're like, oh wow, I didn't know cassava had this mm, element. Yeah. Like, like, like um, uh, on, you know. I was it on Wednesday, on Tuesday, I went to class and I had my short hair, yeah. black short hair, and the next day I was going, I had my short 27 pieces, You not that you want to no, say, I know, I know this account, and, I've had and, it too. And my classmate was like, oh, what happened to you, you go overnight? I just, I just started laughing and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be rude, but you didn't just ask me that dumb question. I, I just I just couldn't help it. I had to call <coughs> my other cousin. I'm like, can you please explain to this lady what we do to our hair when yeah, we come yeah. to bubble? Okay. And and she was just explaining it to her. You know, I'm like, in conclusion, I literally took my wig off. I'm like, that's what happened. Yeah. I put a wig off. She's like, yeah. oh my gosh, I never seen that before. It was like <laughs> I was thinking, like, what was she from? <laughs> but then we got to ask stuff. Is is wearing wigs also African culture? What? Yeah. Uh, ah. Is that African culture? I think it's, it's, it's standard, it's, it's universal. Thank you, it's universal. Think, yeah. African culture, if you look at from back then, I went to the museum one time where I saw a lot of history about um, Benin and um, Yorubas and, and, and Ghanaians and the, uh, Bantu and all those other tribes. If you look at the sculptures that were made back then, women had all these funky designs and beads and stuff. Beads yeah. in their hair, and it was full That's head, of, full head of hair. You know? Full head of hair. I'm talking about hair that, you know, she was wrapping it, it was. No, no, no. Was well, it was just everywhere. So I was saying to myself, like, we as people from <coughs> our generation probably we've lost a lot we've of touch yeah. with who we really we are. We were basically on cornrows then. 
Yeah, I know, yeah. but I don't know. As a man, when I've dated obviously African women, mm. full African women, I said to them, "Why do you never see your hair?" What did they say to me? It's the weather. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the, the that's is, true. Is, that's is, true. Though. Why is no, it? No, no, that's true. Though. But you know, when you come abroad, like my mom, when we were back home in Africa, my mom' hair was like this long. Okay. And as soon as we came, we, when we came to this country, the weather literally, apart from the fact that aging makes you, you also lose yeah, your hair, the weather really messed her hair up. So sometimes yeah. you can't really blame what Africa. Don't really blame anyone. I'm just saying it's, it's 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 a rarity now. When I'm talking about tradition, we talk about what we, who we really were, yeah. who we really meant to be. Yeah. Our identity was women who have full head of hair, who are proud to be you know, women and men, who are proud to be who they were regarding their culture, their tradition, and even their dress beliefs, code. and dress code. In Nigeria, there's some sets now, of dress, um, dress sense you can't go. Like, that's right. You can't, but you come to UK and you'd be like, oh no, I could yeah. go on mini, a mini yeah. bottom shirt. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have any. <laughs> but there's some certain places in Nigeria you can't do that. You Everyone's going to be looking like you like a slot. That's right. And that's why now that you know we've come to this country, we're not showing that, oh, this is a bit about my culture that I want to implement in my place of work, for instance. Or within my family, if you have a family where you're not multicultural, you know, you might marry, you know, you have a, you have a, you have a multicultural marriage or whatever, you know, you, you, you don't adopt, you don't bring yeah. in anything, you just take you it in. It, yeah. you just, you just, <laughs> just, fitting, in. just fitting in. Yeah. But there's something about you that's different, something about you that makes you who you unique. are. Unique. Yeah, and you need, and you've got to bring it out. You know what I mean? So. You know, that's why um, I would always say it's good to be yourself because every other person has been taken. So go. trying to be someone else, so trying to be someone else is. Your, I think that's identity theft. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I think you're right. Because <laughs> the, the thing is, every time we're trying to be British, a uh, white man, dress like them, do like them, do what they do, we're fitting yeah. in and we're not unique. No, no. Yeah. So when we now start being ourselves, that's right. if I go out in the morning, I know this is not realistic, you go out and you wear your kemme, your trousers, the big proper mm -hmm. African trousers, yeah. you wear your buba, they will look at you. Definitely. Now, you now the interpretation is yeah. up to them, yeah, yeah. but they will look at you certain ways. World star! It's drawn attention <laughs> to you. But, but the thing is, why do you care though? Exactly. And they pay your bills. I think that's where the problem is. Yeah. The timidity. You're timid yeah. about this culture. Low self-esteem. Exactly. That's so that's the problem. And let's say we wake up in the morning now, everyone's drinking tea. And coffee and stuff, but when it's you know, we start pop on all. Yeah, we used to have pop on a car. Yeah, even, even in my workplace, they know me. They're even watching this. Yeah, they're like, they can validate this. Yeah, I don't drink tea. I don't drink. I don't drink coffee. Nothing like that. They know me. I don't Femme, drink coffee myself. Femme just drinks water, or that's flavored good. water, or juice. That's good. So it's like they know that. So it's like not because it's my culture. Because I just I was never used to that kind I, of. I don't have a problem with people drinking tea and coffee, but the, yeah. the fact that we move from having our pop and just. Use it. Not in Nigeria. We have tea. We have Lipton tea. It's a different tea. Why do we throw it away? And it's some of the tea is cold. But why do we throw our culture away and just take this people's culture as our number one culture? Because we you can borrow. But we throw us away. We love the word. You can borrow. Borrow. When you watch many movies, yeah, like the old ones, when it's immigrants abroad and they come back to Africa, they come up with the baseball cap, they come up with glasses. And his voice changes, hey man, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, man? And then they don't eat the, they don't eat the rice and chicken anymore. No, get me, oh, you say risotto, get me a uh, risotto, uh, yeah. Get, get oh, me a hamburger. And, and you see them changing their accent. Yeah. So yeah. They're helping the white man sell his culture to us and everyone wants to buy it. Honestly, so like, wants it. I think it's just not being able to be able to be um, considerate about your own self mm -hmm. and bring a bit about your own self into the mix. Not just saying, yeah, I want to learn about your because I'm here. You have to. But then I want to bring it something, give something back to you and say, this is a bit about my culture too. Why don't you try trying this for breakfast or this for lunch yeah. or this for dinner? That's you know what I mean? Saying. Or try this kind of food if you're struggling with your eyesight. Oh, let's get the apple. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? They have jello now. Yeah, they love jello fries. Oh, no, it's not kind of J-Rice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's something we should be proud about. That's what I'm saying. That's one thing Someone like Sandra will go to Nigeria and start acting like... <laughs> Jamaican culture, right? We had, I remember there was this thing on, 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 on YouTube about this chef, I'm not going to say the name, it was a chef on YouTube that was making jerk chicken and rice or some kind of, and it was completely incorrect to how it was being made by the Jama wow. like Jamaican culture. And like people were like, at least, at least, <coughs> at least they're trying to incorporate into their own, I said, yeah, it's, you know, it's jerk chicken or whatever, but at least they're trying to incorporate into their own culture. So yeah, you know, we like jerk chicken, we know where it came from, we want to. Try to twist like it a little bit yeah. and make yeah. it turn on. It's a beautiful thing when you do when you do something like that. So but how many people now go and put Jello fries on on uh, Jamie Oliver's show and they start saying, "Oh, you know, 
Uh, yeah, we should be ambassadors of our culture. Right, like, yeah, exactly. We need to do that more often. So the next time we're coming here, we should wear African tie. That's, That's a, 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 And you know, when we go for club interviews, then I start to dress oh. like pinky, right? Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, no, 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 in our in our workplace everywhere it will get, get amended into the law and we would have a place as well so it's, it's all about us history. fighting history. for ourselves yeah one yeah. person starting yeah. it because if you don't do it joseph is going to start it. Out. i don't mind when the, the next time we're going to wear south africa oh is it okay yeah. i think we're going to do that i'll bring pap as well <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You, you, know, might, you might start something, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know we, 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 could, we could do something like that. I think when yeah, yeah, the traditional approach is fine, but I think you have to be very, very. There's certain elements and times for those things to do because you have to put the right time to incorporate right something place, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to understand time. Time for your identity? No, no, no not time for your identity. I'm talking about like bringing stuff in to like if you're working with a group of people who are naive about African culture, because obviously yeah. most of us have had this situation where sometimes where are you from? You say you are from Nigeria, from Africa. They ask, what's it like? Because when they see, most people have their own impression of Africa from yeah. nat National Easy. Geographic. Yeah. National yeah. Geographic. What is these zebras and hyenas running about? <coughs> and they ask you, do they have houses there? Not to be rude. You know, some of them but they don't know. We, they actually think that we live on... In huts. Streets. In huts and little villages. No joke. They don't see it as a civilised, populated... Mm -hmm. You know, community where you've got the nicest cars, the biggest houses, we've even got yachts in Africa. People mm -hmm. don't know that. Mm -hmm. You've got billionaires who live in Nigeria yeah. who are more, more wealthy than most of the people who live mm -hmm. in this country. You know, like, people don't know that it's actually a civilized because the news told you different things. Because yeah. you might see like Libya, you might see war, chaos, and everything. But you don't know <clears> there's <throat> areas where it's actually so populated nice, yeah. and it looks like you don't even look like Africa. Yeah. It's just yeah. sad because I feel like Africa and Africans have just so underestimated a lot. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's just really sad. And sometimes you can't always be the one to fight. Sometimes you just some battles you just leave. You just gotta let you it go. Just let it go. And no matter how you try. Yeah. Like. But then that's where I I disagree. You okay. know why I disagree? It's because I mean everybody's waiting for so for the Messiah. Everybody's waiting for oh, he's the Messiah. Yeah. It's, it's coming. But we are the ones that can fight the battle. Like if yeah. you leave a battle. You're leaving your what you're leaving um, a whole generation mm -hmm. in in the rear. So and whatever you can do, like we stand, we're here talking about Africa. We're mm -hmm. fighting a battle, whether we know or not. Mm -hmm. So if we start with different uh, personal movements, it can change other people, the new generation, the ones that are coming to actually move ahead of the culture. Because the culture is our identity, is our history, and when we lose that, we have nothing. Mm -hmm. And when we're trying to be like the white man, you're not you right. Can't fit, you can't, yeah, because you don't yeah. you, you don't have that upbringing. Yeah, you know? that's why you were saying about values. Even for me. I can't even, I can't lose my values. Even though my, my voice, voice has changed, I don't even know when it happened. One moment I'm talking like this, like this, and before you know it. <clears throat> and even when it even comes to the accent, it sometimes depends on where and who you are. I would, there yeah. are some friends I'm yeah. now today. Yeah. You will, like, when the first impression would have seemed, oh, she's too and posh. But if I would sound that I know from back home, mate, forget English. Yeah. <laughs> who English head? That is from <laughs> school. You get so when I was so, you, yeah. when I, if I, from school, you speak, yeah. but it just depends on who you it's with. But you. your values, it should still, I feel like it should, if anything, it should grow, yeah. but in a positive way. Yeah. As for culture, sometimes we can't help it. No. Sometimes we just want to either fit in or it just happened naturally. Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess I just rather wear a job yeah. kind of pair of jeans yeah. and I can't wear the bicycle thing, you know. I'm kidding. You get me. Let me ask a question. This is a question, and I want to, I want to understand it. What are our values as Africans <clears throat> that is different from that that the Bible teaches us? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, our values is basically biblical. Yeah, and yeah. you can't really separate it from the Bible. Yeah, no, you can't. I mean, so what is our true values that's different from the Bible? Because most times when we act, we say we have African values, but it's just yeah. normal biblical values. <coughs> that's very true, you know. Do you it's understand? True. Respect is one of the biggest things. That's biblical. Yeah, one of the biggest things I think is respect in, in, respect. in African cultures is respect. I mean, I'm sure and every other culture has the same thing, but I think our, our, our value of respect was a lot higher. As I said, with the prostrating and the women obviously like <laughs> being this emblem of like... You know, when In Africa, when I was younger, when a woman was pumpy, but she was big. I mean, she was living well. Beautiful. It made, it made Evidence of good living. Good living. That's what my mom would always say. It was, it was something where you could tell that's her, yeah. Men love big she, women. She's, <laughs> no, like, that's, that's just, uh, no, 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 no,
she's chubby, you know, oh, she's, you know, I mean, she's eating well. That's the woman you want to yeah. you want to get with because that's the woman that yeah, you can tell that she's not from a good home. Yeah. But when she's hungry, and then she's like really slim. No offense. <laughs> it wasn't seen as a thing back then. It wasn't seen as attractive back then. Mm -hmm. But then in the Af in the Western culture, a lot of people value. A lot of people were very slim. People were very you know um, um, you know into this kind of L'Oreal you know mm -hmm. style trendy of fashion and trendy. And trendy. So it's cool now. So the African people like the Kenyans, for instance, most Kenyans who were the runners used to be very slim, very in shape athletes and whatnot. Like and if you, if they come over here, people are like, oh my god, you like a model, and, and for them it's natural. They'll be like, oh, what's and your then, diet plan? You know, what, 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 what do you eat? Nothing. I eat like and a. Then, and then that's the reason why you see some of the ladies when they come over here, they want to change their body. You see the ones that want to go do some surgery, surgery. to have eating big eating, or eating. big balm and all of that. Yeah. I'm like, where's that coming from? So basically, in Africa, there's another thing about when you're talking to your elders, you you really can't look eyeball to eyeball, like in in the Western world, because mm -hmm. they feel that oh, you don't respect them. You should, you should, your head should be should down. Bow. You understand? It's not like you're bowing, but your head is basically down yeah. while you're talking to an elderly person. And do you know one when I remember at college we had this stuff. You know one of the uh, one of the main issue in communication that that you know how obviously in communication we have different barriers that affect communication. <coughs> you know, one big thing is culture. Culture is a big thing in communication. Like obviously in Africa when we talk to our, our elders or parents, we don't have to look them in the eyes. If you in England, whatever sector you are, air, te air sector, whatever sector, when you're communicating with people, you don't look at them in their eyes. They actually that's actually so rude. You can actually get in trouble for that. Yeah. Like culture, that's why culture and other others, but culture especially, yeah, it's one big issue in communication. But to us in Africa, it's no big deal. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Let me know me. Are we age me? But you want to do it here. <laughs> like that is rude. You can't even go to a hospital anywhere. You're talking to a patient or whatever. What age? You're not looking at them in the eyes. They'll be like, it's Am I down there? Yeah. Eye contact. Yeah. Eye contact yeah. is so important yeah. in communication. So it's the other way around. In Africa, it's disrespectful. In, in England, in it's, England, it builds communication. If you don't give that eye contact, I don't know. You, you can't, can't even get a job. Which yeah, one is right? Which one is right? That's the. Of course, which one is right? I think for me, I've experienced both. Yeah. I think when I was in Africa, I was, I was encouraged to look at people in the eye when I'm talking to them, or look at people in the eye when I'm greeting them. You know, especially obviously if I'm talking to my elder, then it's even in school. You know, you have when I was in King's College, the GS, GSS one, you had the seniors, and it was like, hey, are you don't look in the eye. Am I down there? Yeah, you know, that's for different. me, that's for me, I think it's it's it's, it's wrong. Yeah. You're talking to someone and you're looking down. It's this. It it just shows you're timid. And if you look at it, most of our Africans they're very shy. They they're not bold to express themselves. Themselves. That and that's true. the reason the politics and I don't want to go into politics <laughs> now. The the governments are misbehaving, but Africans are not able to stand up and fight. Mm. But in America or in the Western world, you you, you see rapid. Yeah. You know the protest because why they they they're bold. Let yeah. me add to what you're saying. Before I say anything, I want to say that I respect African culture as much as we're saying we should express our African values. There are, there are issues with our culture, <coughs> it's, it's our issue of oppression, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. I think what you're saying is right. When you have a child at home, and the only way you can show that um, he can show you respect is when he fears you. It's wrong. You beat him up when he makes mistakes. <laughs> You beat no, your wife. necessarily, man. No, nah, in most cases. Okay. Let me let me tell you what it is. Africa. Af this is how we is because this is how we learned from the oppressor. Yeah. That yeah. to control people, you, you, you fear. Yeah, you fear. You threaten. Threat. Threats are probably one of the most common things. Yeah. In African homes. Yeah. But